This one's got a gate that will help to go through. This one doesn't, but they're little trailheads here. We took my pickup last time right up to here, mm -hmm. and there's a kind of a steep incline, and with the issues I've had with the truck, we decided not to, we just backed down. These two places here, friends of ours that have had this moose tag down here, mm -hmm. have seen good bulls in here. Okay. And the biologist, anything that's marked with a B, and will mark up your um, map. I've got two more of them right here, identical to this. And so we'll mark them up to be identical, but I met with the biologist down in uh, Pinedale. And so the bees are um, biologist recommended okay. these two areas here. The D's are um, Doc Polly, a good friend of ours. Two years ago, his dad had the tag down here. So anything with the D that's on here is recommended by Doc. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll all go as a group, take two four wheelers, mm -hmm. and we'll scout these two areas in the morning. Okay and then we'll come back, probably have lunch, and then we'll pick one or two of these places up here. You can't, in, in an afternoon, you cannot go up here, come all the way back down here and go over here. It's just right. too, too, too late. Far. Too, yeah. So, as soon as we cross the bridge, if we go back in here, it's a commitment to get all the way to the end of it, no. but at the end of it is an incredible creek, and it's gonna be still running no matter how dry it is up mm -hmm. here. And I mean, it was the moosiest looking area that we probably saw. Well, we got Chef Ron. <laughs> We got the big moose hunter Michael, the guide Ken, and the filmer Nate behind the camera. Yeah, we're really roughing it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Propane barbecue. It's, it's really cold out here. <laughs> A little chilly. Cut all that firewood today. We just saw three moose, two cows and a calf. Um, Good sign. Wilson tried to <laughs> make his call to I see if we get the bull to up. come in, but um, I don't know whether or not there's just not one close enough or he could see the cows that he had over here and realize that we weren't a cow over here. But anyway, it's our first morning of scouting. The season opens up tomorrow morning and uh, you know we'll either send somebody back in here to scout, or this may be where the area once we go up. Probably got, what, another three miles of this two track going up, so we'll take it to the end and then decide whether we'll hunt this in the morning, but if we don't hunt it, we'll, we'll, hunt it you'll it. come up tomorrow I'll and, because there, there should be a bowl with I those two cows. So. Two cows? So, I would yeah. think so. Yeah. I mean, he's going to come just, just for the smell of a cow, let alone if it's in season. Yep. All right, head on up the mountain. Good start. saw that I mean we're rubs like this so you've got them these moose last time we were up here scouting they come along this ridge and then they go down to those willows over there so you know tomorrow's opening day and I don't want to be walking around too much now and, and kick anything out that's that's in here but these, this rub still got sap on it so this is where he shed the velvet this year but there were bigger trees that he's rubbed on as he went along this ridge further back. Here's an old rub, you can tell here. But this is what Ken and I went up. See how this that ridge kind of ends over here. But we hiked up through here last time we were up here about six weeks ago. And it's real moose country back in there. And that ridge goes all the way down into the bottom where those willows are that we had to leave the UTVs. And there was a lot of moose sign in there earlier in the summer. So 
I kind of wish we heard some grunts or something, but uh, I know that's only a two-day rub there, and there were some fresh rubs down there, so there's a bull moose or more than one probably in this area. But I think we better get out of here before we start spooking things out. We know there's moose in the area. Um, you know, we've seen a couple of them ourselves. We've talked to a lot of deer, oh, half a dozen deer hunters that either had them in their camp last night. Nobody has seen a big one. What we've decided is we came down to the lake area here. Um, we're gonna go back to the cabin that we're staying in. And then maybe tomorrow morning, we'll go after that big bull again. Wyoming opening morning of moose season 2018 it's perfect temperature it's about 30 degrees this morning very little wind um, we scouted all day yesterday saw a couple of cows and a calf but we haven't seen a good bull uh, moose even in the prior trips down here but it's a great area um, they only give out 25 tags it's taking me 15 years to draw the tag I'm hunting with a good buddy of mine, uh, Ken Heinrich, we call him Wilson. Earlier this morning, he went up here, glassed to the north. I've been glassing to the south. Um, there's a lot of willows down in the bottom, big open area, some quaking aspens. The moose, while it's cool like this in the morning, will just be traveling. Um, biologists down here told me that the, um, the rut it's the very end of September, early October, so we're hoping that, that they actually uh, are in the rut and they'll travel all day long, but if they're not quite in the rut yet, they'll be out in the morning in these open areas. They're feeding, getting their water. But by this afternoon, it's predicted to be in the mid-50s, maybe even 60 degrees. So we like to have timber around these open areas because that's where the moose will go and lay up when it gets too hot in the, uh, in the afternoon. So I'm excited, I've got the new gun just for this hunt. It's a 30 nozzler in our uh, all carbon fiber. Now that Gunworks is making stock, so we've made the stock on this gun. We've got a carbon fiber barrel on it. I'm excited, I took it on a uh, antelope hunt. Successful, uh, great accuracy. The guys did a great job with the gun, so I'm really, uh, really happy with it. Our idea this morning is to glass this open area um, which we've done and walk around go down to the bottom of this meadow and then hike back up to where Ron's looking and see what he saw so off we are on opening morning there's a rub up here and three across and we're in between two two openings here where I think the moose will stay on the ridge line while they're breeding so we're gonna walk up this ridge line to the towards the north and see if we can't spot something at the upper end. All right, let's go. There's a pretty big rub up here on the left. It's high enough that it's probably a moose. It's not anyway. It's got to be four feet off the ground at the bottom of it. Elk would rub it further down than that so but this is pretty thick timber in here so we're going to start making a lot more noise walking around than we want but yeah, yesterday we took a two track that goes through this marsh area here up towards the north and there's another elevation above that that we're going to go check out i don't know how we're going to get over there from here but we'll figure it out six weeks ago on a kind of a scouting trip and 
we hiked up from the bars up on this ridge and saw what we think is pretty good um, moose hut territory. So yesterday, we kind of split up. I found this game trail. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier than going up through the down timber. So we're gonna take this down, this uh, game trail, up to this ridge, glass this open area, then check the whole ridge line. If we don't see what we're looking for, we'll come down. The big open area to the north. We'll glass to the north. If we see something, we'll put a stalk on it, obviously. If not, we'll be able to glass to the south, back where we were earlier this morning. If we don't see anything at that point, we'll probably head back to the UTVs yep. and, and then go find another area. spotted three cows, so we thought we'd see if the bull maybe moved in on them, so we're calling to see if maybe he'll answer back. On this particular hunt, since I had drawn the tag and they let you know back in, uh, I think I found out in May, um, I talked to the guys in the shop about the different calibers and I've got a 7LRM that shoots 180 grain um, bullet, and plenty big enough probably to take down a, a Shiver's moose, but the guys kind of talked me into going a little bit bigger, so I had them build me a Magnus in uh, our carbon fiber, both stock and barrel, uh, in 30 nozzler. And we had two choices with the bullet and I thought, well, if I'm going 30 caliber, I might as well go with the bigger bullet. So. We've um, built it around a 225 grain um, bullet and it goes, it fires at a little under 3,000, 29, I think 25 feet per second. Real happy with the gun, real happy with its accuracy, uh, happy with the bullet and uh, I'm just hoping that we get to take a big Shiras Moose with it. We're going to go ahead and try to move on up the mountain. We didn't get any calls here, so we're going to go check out a big meadow that's in between this area and the big meadow ridge line. So we're going to go try to check that out. call for trying to get a bull to grunt back so you don't do a lot but every once in a while you can do a cow call maybe get one just to locate himself so we tried it before we get back to the ATVs just in case one's laying down somewhere not really in rut yet but tried it so don't hear anything we'll head back to the ATVs and move on to a new area I want to be able to lay down. Okay. See how he's walking this? It's all good. Uh, I'm not going to take him until after you give me the range, and then I want him to turn. I don't want to shoot him straight on. So, okay. Okay. Got it. Okay, I got him. I got him. Okay. 420. 422. 420. Right. I'm 425. 
Okay, he's 420. Don't shoot yet, he's walking toward me. Let me get another range. Okay, he's gonna turn broadside here. No wind, none at all. 419. Hold on. Yeah, you got him okay. now? You got him? Okay. Not taking him until, until he turns sideways. Turn. Yeah. Yeah. He's walking. No wind. All right. All right. Okay, he's turning sideways. You got him? Yep. All right. I'm going to take him. Okay. Perfect impact. No, he did fine. That was worth the whole trip. We uh, were looking all day for a bull. Possibly we've got four, if not six, that we've got in this valley. One I shot, and a, a minimum of three that are up in those trees over there. So, I guess patience paid off. <laughs> yeah, I just, we would have come up here this morning, I don't know if we would have seen it. It's one of those things we just don't know. But the decoys out in the field helped us. All we needed was a cow and a couple calves to go out in the willows. <laughs> Is that what the Wilson's telling me? That's all I'm telling you. I'm, I'm thinking he was coming to my cow call way back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. The world famous Wilson cow call. Pretty excited, it's opening day. Um, we had some cow and two calves out there that we've got some good footage on. We've got a big open valley. We scattered this yesterday. You've got film of the two cows we saw down below. We came up here, we thought water, willows, trees for cover. Well, at least one day this week, we've got to come up here in the evening or first in the morning. So we cow called down below where we saw the cows, they didn't get any reaction at all, so we kind of took our time getting up here, waiting for it to get the sun to go down. Got up here, there was a cow with the two calves. Got everything set up so that we could glass the whole valley. And sure enough, while I walked over to the next ridge to look over, Ron and, uh, and Wilson spotted, they said, two bulls just up on this hill that looked like they were gonna come out and go towards that cow with the two calves. So I was like, okay, I get over here. And as I'm walking over, I spot the bull coming out of the trees straight at us. So I'm like, well, I gotta see if that's good. They glass it, they go, it's good. It was just, everything came together. We were able to get the windage, which it turned out wasn't any wind, but we had perfect ranging from uh, Ken and I was able to get down prone. We waited and waited, he can't, actually started at about 440, he got down to 425. He turned once, and I was gonna take the shot, and Ken said, wait a minute, he's gonna to start to walk. So he walked again towards us, and I said, the next time he turns, we're taking him. He's got one really good side with the paddle. I'm, I'm dying to go up there and see it. The other side isn't quite as good, but the one side has the paddle, and that was my criteria. I've put in, like I said, for 15 years, and I've shot a moose up in Newfoundland, but never in Wyoming, and so, I've now got a Shiras moose with a good paddle on one side and we'll see what the other side looks like. Shot was 4, 24, 19, something like that. Nosler 30, 225 grain bullet, worked perfect. One shot, maybe took a step, then tried to take another one right over. So I can't believe this opening day, <laughs> waited 15 years and we're done. So. But I'm glad I did with my friends. Nate did a great job getting us all set up and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Now starts the hard work, trying to get a moose about a quarter of a mile up here. We won't be able to take the four wheelers down in the bottom. So we'll go down and uh, start dressing them out and figure out how big a pieces we can lug up here. So I'm excited to put my hands on them though. Oh. Well. Now for the fun. Yeah. Good. If we could have had the left side on both. <laughs> that would have been a... Actually, he, he broke it off. It. He broke it off. Yep. Oh. So, oh, my God. He would have been 
both paddles like that. Except you can see here, he must have been fighting pretty hard. And I don't know who won, but he lost <laughs> the top of his palm. On the other side, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points on the right. One, two, he broke off here. Yeah. Three, four here, but he's missing all the ones through here in the top of his really paddle. Heavy duty yeah. forks on him. Yep. Right. Would have been an, a great bull if he was both sides with it before he broke this off, but man, I'm happy. Opening day. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Ron. Absolutely. Thanks, Nate. For all the hard work. Yep. Now the work begins.